chances are that you have already tried this problem and you are wondering why you are getting a wrong answer. How hard could it be? You are given an array and you have to find the product of all the integers except that one number, right? Well, this is a really fun problem to solve and I really love it. Most of the interviewers do. And in this particular video, I will tell you why is that so. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will describe you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see the most obvious way to solve this problem and why there is a problem with it. Why are you getting that wrong answer? Going forward, I will tell you an optimal way to solve this problem and then as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and see how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array of integers and you have to return me an answer array where each element is a product of all the elements except itself, right? So what does that actually mean? Let us look at our first test case. We have an array 1, 2, 3, 4 and you can see all of them are integers. Now you have to return me an answer array and it should have some elements. But how do you get these elements? So for the first element, you need to find the product of all the other elements except itself. That means a product of 2, 3 and 4, right? And that will be 24. So 24 comes in my first place. For this next position, I need a product of all of these elements except this middle element 2, right? So in this case, I will get 3 into 4, that is 12 as the answer. In my third place, I need a product of all the elements except the third place, right? So that will give me 4 into 2 into 1 and that is 8. For the last place, similarly, I will need a product of 3, 2 and 1 and that is 6. So for our first test case, this will be your answer. Based on this similar idea, we have a test case number 2 as well, right? And in this test case also, you will need to return me an answer array, correct? And this will also have 5 places. The answer for this test case will be 0, 0, 9 and then 0 and then 0. That is because if you are not at the third place, no matter whatever multiplication you do, you will get a 0 in between, right? And anything multiplied by 0 gives you a 0, right? So all of these places have a 0. Only when you are at the middle element or the third place element, you have to give me a product of all the remaining elements, right? And as you can see, 3 multiplied by minus 3 will give you a 9 in fact. So for test case number 2, this resultant array will be your answer. Now if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to try it out first. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. So what happens when you start to solve the problem? It seems so so simple, right? But why it is under the medium difficulty? So the most obvious way to approach this problem would be, let us say I have this array with me 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, I have to find the product of every element except self. So my first intuition is that, okay, I will take a product of every integer in the array. And then what I'm going to do is when I will create my resultant array, I will just divide every number from this result, right? So that will give me 24 divided by 1, 24 divided by 2, 24 divided by 3, and then 24 divided by 4, right? And this in fact gives you the correct answer, right? But when you try to write a code for it, you will see that your code fails, right? You will get a wrong answer. So why does that happen? Well, the primary reason why this is happening is because the problem has a certain condition. It says that all of these products will fit in the numeric range of 2 to the power 32. So when you expand 2 to the power 32, this is the maximum integer that you can get, right? So now try to think about it. When you are creating a product of all the integers in an array, it could be possible that your product gets above this limit. And if it gets above this limit, it will fail. It will give you a wrong answer. For example, let us look at this test case. I have three integers with me and they are 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power 3 and 10 to the power 5, correct? So technically, when I will be solving this problem, what will be my answers? In the first place, I will get 10 to the power 8. In the second place, I will get 10 to the power 9. And in the third place, I will get 10 to the power 7. 
right? Because of all of these individual products, right? And if you see, all of these integers are lesser than 2 to the power 32, right? So this in fact is a correct test case and the correct answer. But what happens if I try to apply this original approach to my problem? When I try to multiply all of these numbers, I will get 10 to the power of 12, correct? And if you see, this 10 to the power of 12 is greater than 2 to the power 32, right? And that is why this will fail and you will get a wrong answer. So this is one kind of a edge case that you have to take care of. The other case happens when there are zeros involved in the array. For example, I have this other test case with me, right? So what happens when you try to approach this problem in the same way of taking all the products? As soon as you take all the products, you will get a zero as the resultant product, right? And how do you divide it now? Zero divided by anything will be a zero and zero divided by zero will not be a definite answer, correct? So once again, this approach will fail. So you have to handle all kinds of these special test cases, right? Sure. If you try to find a lot of if conditions and if you try to somehow skip all of these edge cases, yes, you can get a correct answer even with this approach. But then your code starts to look a little ugly and that is not a recommended approach. So what is your interviewer expecting? What kind of a solution should you come up with? Let us take a look at it now. Okay, so let us take up our sample array once again. This time I have five elements, right? And the resultant output for this particular array will be this resultant array, right? So sometimes when you're trying to find an optimal solution, just look at the input test case and the output that you're expecting and try to work out in the middle. So technically or theoretically, what you are doing over here, you are multiplying every element in here, right? And then you get 144 as your total product, right? But you have to find out the integer except itself, right? So what you do, you do 144 divided by 3 and that will give you 48, right? You do 144 divided by 4 and that will give you 36, correct? This is the approach you are taking. But if you try to approach this problem in a more logical way and if you try to think a little bit out of the box, there is a neat little trick that is hidden in the problem. So let me consider 4 over here, right? When I look at 4, how do you obtain the result for it? you multiply 3 on the left and then you multiply 6, 1 and 2 on the right, correct? So this will give me 3 and this will give me 12 over here, right? And then to get my final output, I do a 3 into 12 and that gives me 36, correct? Similarly, let me look at 6 this time. What are the elements on the left? On the left, I have 3 and 4 and on the right, I have 1 and 2, correct? So what I will do is I will multiply all the elements on the left that is 12 and I will multiply all the elements on the right that is 2, correct? And then to get my final output, I will multiply the left and right values. So 12 into 2 and that will give me 24, right? So this kind of gives us a very neat little trick. What we can say is the result at the ith position is equal to the product of all the elements on the left into product of all the elements on the right, correct? And to verify this, what we can do is we can try to create two products, a left to right product and a right to left product. So first of all, we will move left to right and then we will move right to left and make all the products. So let me first start going from left to right. I start from the very first element that is three. I do not have any element to the left of it. So we move ahead. Now I move at 4, right? I have only one element to the left of 4, right? So I will write down 3 over here, correct? Now move ahead. Now I encounter 6. What do I have on the left? I have 3 multiplied by 4. So I will write down 3 multiplied by 4 over here. Next, I move to the next position. Then on the left, I have 3, 4 and 6. So I'm going to write down 3 into 4 into 6. Moving ahead, I have the element 2 and all these four elements. So we are done with one part now. The second part is going right to left. So once again, start over here. There is no element to the right of two. So I will leave this place empty. Moving on, I come at one. I have only one element to the right of one. 
correct? And that is two. So I just write down two in this position. Moving ahead at six, I have one and two. So I will write down one multiplied by two over here. Then coming at four, I have six, one and two. And for the last place three, I have all of these four elements. As soon as you evaluate these results, you get all of these new values, correct? And now to derive your answer, what you need to simply do is just multiply all of these values. Because technically what you are doing is you are taking a product of all the integers on the left and a product of all the integers on the right. So you can easily see that these are forming your result answers. And this way you can solve this problem very, very efficiently. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code based on this concept and see how this actually works. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have a sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with our dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create two arrays to store all the left products and all the right products, correct? Now, what you need to do? You need to start traversing your original array, right? And first of all, we will fill all the elements in my left array. And then what I'm going to do is I will fill all of these elements in my right array as well. For the left array, I will start from the first position and go all the way up to the end because the first position do not have any element to the left. And for filling my right array, I will start from the second last position and go all the way to the beginning, right? So when I run these loops and I fill both of my arrays, they start to look like this, correct? Once you have formed both of these arrays, the last step is to just multiply both of these values, right? And that is what we exactly do in the final step. I will create a new answer array. And in this array, I will just pick up each value from the left array and multiply both of them. If it is blank, I treat it as one because of multiplication with zero will give you a zero. So what I just do is I multiply all of these values and I will start getting my final output. So you can see how easily and efficiently we are able to arrive at our solution. This array is now ultimately returned as your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because we are only doing two iterations of the array and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because we are taking some extra space to store our final output. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that these kind of problems do not test your coding skills specifically. Think about it. There is no code involved, right? It is just about the logic. And that is why interviewers will try to ask this type of a question. They are trying to judge how you can look at the problem and what kind of a logic are you applying? Because most often complex problems like these can be broken down into very simple parts. And as a good programmer and as a good problem solver, you should be able to do that. So tell me what other problems did you find which are more about your logical thinking and not about the coding skill. Tell me one such problem in the comment section below which you have found in your interviews. Also tell me if you faced any problem with the approach that I had. Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.